we are bound by the rules. We would have wanted senators along with to speak, but the rules does not allow it. However, just a few minutes ago, the way I read the rules, the rules on quorum state differently from the interpretation of the chair. So, if it's a question of Senator Salonga speaking, we follow the rules. But if it's a question of the judgment of committee members as the quorum, we do not follow the rules. And for rookie uh, members of Congress, this will definitely confuse us. This will, in fact, tell us that the interpretation of rules is based on whether or not the uh, issue is in favor or against the respondent or the complainant for that matter. So we beg, I also join in the motion that uh, we allow uh, Senator Salonga to speak and if necessary, uh, suspend the rules for that matter just to give the due courtesy uh, required in this case and if necessary for the committee to vote on, on the issue, Your Honor. Any other statements as this regard? Mr. Chairman. Yes, the Honorable. Uh, Mr. Sir. Chairman, just in response to a couple of points raised by the good Vice Chairman, there is no bad precedent that will be set against our rules if the Chairman were to pursue his original decision to allow uh, former Senate President Salonga to give a brief message to the committee. I would like to refresh the memory of our committee that in a hearing of the Appropriations Committee on the Bataan Nuclear Power Plant uh, Bill, in fact, the chairman at that time allowed a former congressman, now Governor Ted Garcia, to address the committee since he is a former member of Congress and he is, uh, he is a person uh, who's him, who himself and his constituency would be eminently affected by the matter at hand. The same, uh, in the same way this morning, Mr. Chairman, um, former Senator, Senate President Salonga is a former member uh, and an eminent former member of the Philippine Congress and uh, in the main, the lead complainer in this impeachment complaint. And finally, Mr. Chairman, as for tradition, well, I, I suppose one of our highest traditions is that of extending parliamentary courtesy, not only to the other branches of government, but the former members of Congress and the eminent former members of Congress at that, Mr. Chairman. And so I also join my voice to the, uh, the increasing number of voices for the good chairman to allow former Senate President Salonga to deliver his brief message to the committee or failing that to put this matter to a vote and submit it to the wisdom of all members of the committee here present. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.
basically complain on our conscience. And so, uh, when it is not, uh, when the rules may not allow it precisely, uh, I move now that we suspend the rules. I and listen to uh, yeah, our Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, 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 I was the first one who raised this issue. May I speak now? Then I will invite Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I can understand uh, the discomfiture of uh, some members of this committee about the possibility of a very distinguished uh, citizen of the land to speak before this committee. We are talking of a person who not only distinguished himself in the halls of Congress, both houses, but uh, in the entire realm of the Philippines. We are not going to create a bad president. In fact, uh, we may be creating a good president. It is uh, not open that uh, we have a distinguished citizen of Senator Salonga's stature present, so I cannot, uh, I cannot uh, anticipate that something like this will happen again. I think the least uh, that we can do, Mr. Chairman, is to listen to the words of wisdom from someone uh, who is so distinguished and we may all uh, benefit from his words of wisdom. Uh, maybe we can have a good compromise here, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, allow him to speak and, uh, so that uh, we can be guided uh, by his words of wisdom. On that note, uh, Mr. Chairman, may I uh, ask for a minute suspension? Mr. Chairman, one last uh, 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 Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Chairman, 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 Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if there is anybody here who has worked with the complainant, main complainant of this case, I think I was one of those, because in the eighth Congress, I was a member of the Commission on Appointments, and the main complainant in this impeachment proceeding was then the CNA President, and I respect him so much for that. However, this is different, Mr. Chairman. This is an impeachment case. Now, if there is a trial, for instance, do we mean that we suspend, uh, we suspend the rules of court for the complaint to allow somebody to talk? I cannot see the wisdom in it. Now, look again, uh, may I reiterate this statement of the Congressman Muka. This is an impeachment case. The first impeachment case filed when Congress after martial law uh, came into existence was that of uh, Ombudsman this year. <coughs> and first, we discussed on the uh, quorum. It's always the majority, because this is an impeachment. It is a trial. 